IDEs or editors are our bread and butter as developers. I mean, you need to type that code somewhere, don't you? And every developer has their favorite IDE or editor. Some prefer Visual Studio Code, others prefer NeoVim, and some simply prefer JetBrains product. JetBrains is that company that develops commercial IDEs for a plethora of languages like IntelliJ IDEA, the most complete IDE for Java or JVM developers, WebStorm for web developers, PyCharm for Python developers, and so on. And on Wednesday, September 13th, JetBrains announced a new IDE in their portfolio, Rust Rover, a dedicated Rust IDE, and I thought I'd give it a try. So if you're interested in finding out whether Rust Rover is something for you and what it offers, stay with me. I usually use Visual Studio Code with Rust Analyzer, the official language server for Rust, and a few other plugins for my work. While it's certainly not new Vim, I'm still pretty okay with it, and I definitely prefer it over other solutions. I should also mention that I work with Rust professionally, which involves a few definitely non-trivial large-sized applications. So I guess this allows me to judge the usefulness of an IDE for Rust relatively well. But now on to Rust Rover. The IDE is currently in public preview, so everyone can download it for free and try it out. You can just go to jetbrains.com slash rust and download a version for yourself if you feel like it. Click on the download link in the upper right corner and choose an installer appropriate for your operating system. And by the way, after release, the IDE will definitely cost you some money, but we will talk about this later. And as a more or less important side information, Rust Rover is implemented in a mix of Java and Kotlin, like all JetBrains products. So you can expect a certain resource consumption from it. But we will also take a look at this aspect later in this video. When you open Rust Rover, you're greeted with a modern looking interface that has everything you'd look for in a modern IDE on a first glimpse. On the left side, you have your project view with all the files in your project, and on the right side, you see your code. The code view does of course include syntax highlighting, which is good to read in its default configuration. And additionally, you're also shown some inline information. You get type and argument name hints out of the box, for example, that you can also click on, which navigates to the definition of that respective type. That's pretty nice because it allows you to navigate seamlessly between definitions. And if you hover over a function or a module, it doesn't take the IDE long to show you the documentation in the pop-up. Overall, this feels as smooth as it does in VS Code with Rust Analyzer. Although Rust Rover doesn't suffer from Rust Analyzer running in the background all the time, which sometimes leads to some waiting time until you see type hints or documentation pop-ups. There's also a shortcut to format your code, of course. But right now, the built-in formatter has a whole different understanding of how Rust code should look. You can technically configure the built-in formatter yourself, but lastly, you can also just tell Rust Rover to use Rust format instead. To do this, just open your settings, go to Languages and Frameworks, choose Rust, enter the Rust Format section, and enable the checkbox Use Rust Format instead of the built-in formatter. But still, Rust Format used through Rust Rover thinks that a few imports should be ordered differently than calling Rust Format itself through CargoDub. So that is definitely something JetBrains has to work on a little more, or they need to give us more transparency on how exactly they call Rust Format. Most projects should use Rust Format directly, however. So a shortcut to format your code right inside your IDE is only a nice to have. But as long as it doesn't produce the same results as calling Rust Format from the command line, you should only use it with care and not rely on it. The feature itself, it's still neat. But to be fair, you can also configure VS Code with Rust Analyzer to use Rust Format on saving, and you usually get the same result. Next to formatting your code, Rust Rover also allows you to get inline hints through Clippy directly. You just need to go into your settings again, navigate to Languages and Frameworks, enter the Rust section, and click on External Linters this time. You need to set the setting External Tool to Clippy, and then check the box Run External Linters on the fly. If you now type in something that Clippy would usually warn you about or even throw an error for, like giving this usually ignored closure parameter a name like foo, you see that the IDE underlines the variable. If you now hover over it, the IDE shows you the output Clippy would give you in a cleaner way than in the terminal. Calling Clippy through Rust Rover does gladly also take your Clippy configuration into account. So when you add another disallowed name, for example, and use it within your code, you can see how the inline hint correctly identifies the variable name as invalid, like you configured. Like with formatting before, you can configure the same behavior in VS Code with Rust Analyzer. Although it somehow feels smoother in Rust Rover, because the IDE saves your files automatically and runs your configure tools afterward. As the next feature, you get inline git information. In this case, where I've implemented the whole main function, you can see my name on top of it. 
And if you click on that name, you get Git annotations that show you who made changes to each line of code at what point in time. And if you click on an annotation, Rust Rover opens a Git log with additional information down below. Overall, that's nothing new because other IDEs offer the same functionality. But Rust Rover is also not lacking anything in this case. So it's definitely on par with GitLens and VS Code or other solutions. Writing code feels fluent. Rust Rover's IntelliSense is intelligent like its counterparts in other JetBrains IDEs. You often feel like the suggestions are not randomly sorted, but derived from the context you currently work in. If I add a new route to this service hitting IntelliSense on each step, lists quite a few useful suggestions. Compared to VS Code with Rust Analyzer, the suggestions are definitely better. Rust Analyzer usually doesn't show many useful hints, so you must often rely more on your knowledge of what to do next than on IntelliSense, gently pushing you in the right direction. Like other JetBrains IDEs, Rust Rover also has a graphical interface for nearly everything. If we go back to the Git interface, you can see that it's relatively complete. You have a view of your Git graph in the center and a more detailed view for each commit you can inspect on the right side. On the left side, you get an overview of your branches, both local and remote, which is good for quick navigation. Additionally, you have a lot of Git functionality hidden in context menus in the project view. Overall, the Git context menu contains everything you usually expect, like a history view for a single file, a diff view, an option to create new branches, and so on. Rust Rover also has an integrated terminal, which is surprisingly intelligent. If you type a command that the IDE has support for, it actually recommends you run the command directly inside your IDE. In this case, I can run cargo check right inside the IDE and not only inside the terminal, by pressing command enter as I am on a Mac. If you build your project, you also get some information about the individual build step on the left side. But if you are fluent in the terminal, you won't really need these features. But they are still nice to have, especially as you can create and save different configurations that you can run on demand. Sometimes it's probably better to save your cargo clippy command with several flags persistently than to search inside your terminal history or remember all individual flags that you need to pass to the command. So these features are definitely nice to free up your mind for more important things. On the other hand, many projects already use Xtask to implement all their CI CD stuff with Rust and inside the CLI, which also allows you to type a simple command and then run multiple more complicated commands. So another nice to have, but no necessity in my opinion. One thing that makes Rust Rover a very useful tool, however, is its seamless debug integration. If you've ever tried to debug a Rust application inside VS Code or NeoVim or whatever else, you'll probably like the seamless debugging experience Rust Rover gives you. You can set breakpoints anywhere and simply run your project in debug mode, and it just works out of the box. You can of course step over a statement, step into it or step out of it again, which feels fluent and not clunky at all. The debugger itself also has the most important tools you'd expect from it. You especially have a view that shows you threats and variables, where you can easily take a look at all the threats your applications have started and which state they are currently in. This is the view you usually look at when you want to find out why a function doesn't return the result you'd expect from it. You then usually sit right inside that view, slowly stepping through it and trying to find out why a specific variable doesn't take the value you would have expected it to. Unlike a graphical Git interface or the option to run cargo commands right inside the IDE, Rust Rover's debug feature is definitely a really great thing because it offers a way better experience than the current alternatives on the market or in the open source community. Like most other JetBrains IDEs, Rust Rover does also support other languages. You get out-of-the-box support for Cargo, Toml, YAML, JavaScript, Docker and even some database technologies and you can install more functionality through plugins. The marketplace for plugins that you can access through the settings is relatively full with both official and community plugins. So there's something in there for everyone. Right now, you can download plugins that add a Vim mode, support for .n files, support for Node.js, Prettier, Next, Vue, and a few more. And there are two bad things about this release I want to talk about though. Prior to the early access preview of Rust Rover, JetBrains maintained an open source Rust plugin for IntelliJ, CLion, and a few other of their IDEs. With Rust Rover's release, they have basically deprecated that old open source plugin and completely commercialized Rust support in their IDEs. This means that even if you use one of their free IDEs, you probably won't have access to Rust support in the future. You can think of that move what you want, but I get a bad taste, although I understand that they also need to make money somehow, especially if they put a lot of effort into their support for Rust. Next to that, as I have already mentioned, Rust Rover runs on the JVM. Even if the IDE is idle, it consumes a whooping 4GB of memory. 
And if you open another window, you need even more memory. So that is something to definitely keep in mind if you don't work on a higher end machine with a lot of memory available. But let's take a look at the pricing model now. So you get a better feeling of how much money you'll have to spend if you find Rust Rover worth it. At the moment, JetBrains hasn't decided on the pricing yet. And the IDE will stay in early access at least until late in 2024. But looking at their other products and given what they have already stated, we can at least try to make some assumptions. If we take a look at Sea Lion, which previously was the most complete solution for Rust development out of all of JetBrains products, we get a price tag of 99 euros net for individual users in the first year. And if you continue to subscribe to Sea Lion, you pay 79 euros net in the second year and 59 euros net from the third year on. Goland, JetBrains IDE for Go, has the same pricing. So we can probably assume that Rust Rover will probably cost in the same range as these other two IDEs. There's also an option for a monthly payment, which comes in at 9 euros 99 net. Oh, and please keep in mind that net prices mean that you usually still have to pay value added tax on top. Oh, and if you're a huge JetBrains fanboy or want more than only one IDE and already have an old products pack, Rust Rover will also be included there. So finally, let me now try to answer what I think about Rust Rover and whether it's worth it. For me personally, there are only three features where Rust Rover has an advantage over my current setup. The first feature is JetBrains' great IntelliSense. I simply don't get the same quality of results with Rust Analyzer that I get within Rust Rover. Sometimes I'm really too lazy to open DocsRS and go through the API of a library manually. In this case, Getting some context-aware help from an IntelliSense is definitely an awesome thing for me, because it spares me from having to switch context by leaving the IDE, opening the browser, and so on. And the second feature is the debugger. The seamless integration of that debugger without much setup and without any special configuration is also something I'd like to have available. Here, I can replicate the same experience with VS Code, but it still feels too clunky too often. And I really like how fluent it feels to debug through my Rust applications and find those nasty bugs I accidentally created. The third feature is the overall feel of Rust Rover. While using the IDE, I never had the feeling that VS Code and Rust Analyzer are often giving me. Whenever I add a heavier dependency or change a lot of code, Rust Analyzer runs in the background, calling cargo commands and preventing me from doing basically anything else. And too often, I just have to wait for Rust Analyzer to finish because it has created a cargo lock to prevent concurrent processes from doing other work, only for me to finally be able to do a quick cargo check myself. And at least right now, it doesn't feel like Rust Rover works this way, which is great. And regarding the other features, they are pretty standard. You can replicate the same with other editors or IDEs, so there's nothing too special here that Rust Rover offers. But would I pay 8 or 10 euros a month for it? Probably yeah, because the price sinks over time if I subscribe yearly and I value productivity pretty highly. Should you buy it? Well, it depends on whether the IDE offers you what you are looking for and whether it offers something other, probably free, tools cannot give you. Gladly, you have a lot of time now to test Rust Rover out for free, so use that chance and share your experience in the comments. And now, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel, because it helps me massively. And until then, see you in the next video.